so what? We sell drugs. We got kids to feed. We hustle all night. Fuck holes and get right. And you know we love to fight. Johnny, <laughs> hey, yo, what is it? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. Today we're taking a look at a fragrance from the house of Bulgari. This one is called Pour Homme Soir. Now this is actually my first review from this house. It's not my first scent. Uh, I actually own a few from this house. I have Bulgari Black, which I love. I have Bulgari Aqua, love. And I recently purchased OT Noir, which uh, I'm gonna review as well. I'm gonna review all of them. Um, but uh, I own four from Bulgari. And as far as what I'm interested in, it's a good question. You know, I definitely wanna check out the higher end Le Gem, uh line, which they have at Bloomingdale's across the street from my office. Those I know are $300 plus. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, those will get discounted one day and I can, you know, maybe grab one if it's good discounted. I'm also gonna buy Aqua Amara at some point. I know the price on that has really skyrocketed. So I should do that sooner than later as it's been discontinued. Um, and I need to give a good look to Black Men Essence and Black Men Orient, which I've heard good things about both. Other than those, I think I'm good on Bulgari, uh, but because I haven't reviewed anything from this house before, let's talk about the brand Bulgari. You know, I like to do that first time I talk about a house. And uh, this is primarily an Italian jewelry maker. They were founded in Italy by a gentleman named Soterios Vulgaris in 1884. And the brand name is a play on the founder's name and the use of the V instead of the U is a sort of homage to the Latin alphabet. So either way you spell it with the V or with the U, it's pronounced Bulgari. And the founder, Soterios, is from Greece. He learned the jewelry trade in Greece, left in 1877, moved to Corfu, then to Naples, and eventually settled in Rome in 1881, started the company in 1884. The first flagship Bulgari location opened in 1905 with the help of his Italian-born sons. Their first international store was opened in 1970 in New York. Subsequent shops opened in Paris, Geneva, Monte Carlo, etc. They now have over 300 stores. You've probably heard about Bulgari. Besides jewelry, they have watches, they have hotel collaborations, bags, and fragrances. And the first fragrance was O.T. Ver, the green tea scent that dropped in 1992. As of today, they have over 90 fragrances in their library, the latest release this year. And I believe they do their fragrances in-house, though I could be totally wrong about that. They are currently part of the LVMH group, though. Now, this scent, um, uh, Pour Homme Soir, I purchased on Amazon, $35 for 100 ml. And you can find it online between 30 to 40 bucks, depending on the size that you purchased. It was a 2006 release. Very simple note breakdown on this one, guys. Just gonna get papyrus, bergamot, amber, and this yearling tea. Really simple. It's an eau de toilette concentration. And your presentation, you've got Bulgari, uh, Pour Homme Soir. You've got the pretty nice cap that are standard on Bulgari fragrances. Um, sort of black metal in there, stainless steel. Um, Pretty heavy for a designer scent and uh, really good atomizer. So uh, pretty cool lines that's standard on Bulgari uh, fragrances. It looks really nice, I have to say. Just sitting there, it's not gonna blow your mind or anyone's mind, but it makes a nice presentation. Bulgari is usually really good about that. I think even black and aqua with their sort of weird round shaped bottles are nice bottles, both. I, I just like Bulgari's aesthetic. Um, so let's start with this in terms of fragrance. If you want a really nondescript scent that isn't very boring or conventional, this is a great option because this is very quiet, but it's got a ton of class to it. And it doesn't go the normal route by being one of these safe citrus men's scents. This is pretty different for a softer men's scent. It's really hard to describe. I would say it has a touch of the aroma of a dry cup of watery black tea. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's sort of fresh and clean with no soapiness. And what a trick that is to pull off. Imagine, if you will, not to sound like we're in the twilight zone, 
how bad is the new remake of Twilight Zone? Anyway, a fresh and clean scent with no soapiness and a reliance on woods tea and maybe just a touch of bergamot to get you there. It's really interesting. And this is class, man. I think Bulgari does class well. Aqua is a classy aquatic. Black is a classy unisex. And this is a classy men's upscale scent. So to picture that, and it, it's hard for me, guys, from just being honest, to, to explain this one, I sort of imagine either a cup of steaming black tea or even Earl Grey tea with crisp woods, a little bit of bergamot at the top, and a, and a sort of clean, musky, nondescript dry down. Certainly good quality for a designer scent, and it really shines in its faint performance, which we'll talk about next. This has quiet, loud performance. It's just enough for someone to get close to you, I feel like. It's quite good at that. I mean, it has really good longevity. It's a subtle scent. Uh, it's gonna last for about 10 hours and mildly project for a good six. And it really doesn't seem that way when you first spray it on, but it's got deceivingly good performance. Really does give off an upscale masculine vibe and smells to me like something a European banker could or would wear. Of course, every everything one should wear what they want, but I think this is a masculine scent, and I think ideally it's best dressed worn, uh, best worn dressed up in the spring or fall. A little too much, believe it or not, for the summer, and maybe just not quite enough for the winter. But it's certainly fine to you know give it a go in the winter, and it definitely um, won't be awful or let you down. Um, if you're looking for something similar to this, it's sort of close to the original. I haven't smelled that in a long time. And that was once or twice at Sephora. Though I do believe that I found that scent to have a little bit more going on. What this does remind me of is a fragrance from the house of the Armani Privé line called Eau de Jade, which I always found to be ludicrously overpriced and boring. But this makes a lot more sense if you want a scent like that, no pun intended, at this price point. Um, that one is $290. And I will say that that feels like the citrus is more heavy and this is way more about freshness from the Tino. If someone were trying to talk you into purchasing this scent, I think they'd say that it's a good quality scent, great price, will not offend a soul. And I think on the flip side, if someone's trying to get you to pass on this one, they'd say, sort of bitter, um, different than most fresh freshies people are used to, it's masculine, well, you'll probably really either enjoy this or you won't. I'm probably not gonna be a middle ground. I am in the middle ground, I think I'm an oddity. I think for me, this is a six and a half out of 10. If I was a different kind of guy, this would be a seven or seven and a half. But I think you need to really be dressed up to work in a conservative way to wear this one. And even then, it's understated. There's nothing wrong with that, but I usually wear dark denim to work, um, like a button-down shirt and driving loafers. And this just doesn't sort of fit that like dandyish profile for me that I kind of enjoy. You guys know I like the barbershop um, sense, the fougeres, stuff like that. Uh, and then when I do dress up, you know, I really like the, the upscale versions of those, apart from MDCI, you know, um, Invasion Barbar Bar and, and Raj's um, Amber X-Ray. And so um, this just doesn't really have a place for me. I appreciate this one. I see its merit. It's just not something that I personally like swoon over. Uh, I think it's very nice. I think it's priced quite well. I think it's worth a look if what I described is appealing to you. It's definitely different than, than what else is out there. And I, I like that. I like the fact that this is different. I think Bulgari does different well, to be honest with you. I think most of the fragrances that I have from Bulgari are very different. Um, so anyway, that is my take on uh, Pour Homme Soir. I would love to know what you guys think of this one. I haven't really, I actually bought this one because one of my friends was like, ah, oh, that's his favorite, was his favorite scent at the time. And uh, he's sort of a collector, not, not like me, but he's got like 30 bottles. Um, and so I was like, cool, I blind bought it. And uh, again, 
like it, just don't love it. And I'd love to know what you guys think of this one. Drop a comment, let me know if you've smelled it. And uh, yeah, I'll review the rest of the fragrances I have from Bulgari down the line. Um, that's it guys, I'll see you again real soon with more videos. You already know what it is. You don't understand and you've got some audacity. Bitch, be like this rough, yeah, take some tenacity. Luke say kill him, a kiss, tell me to kill him. I'll blow your brains out, nigga, I'm thick with him. I smoke a nigga and tell him the fifth did it. Dutch did it. Go ahead, nigga, fuck with it.